Divine Sexuality with me, your host, Crystal Tantric Yogi. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and a productive Monday. And speaking of being productive, tonight we have one of the most productive women I have ever met as a guest on our show. She is definitely an expert in many areas. She is a communication specialist, a sensual empowerment leader, massage therapist, entrepreneur, and the creatrix of orgasmic intelligence. She's a mother of four And literally, the list just goes on and on and on. I am proud to claim her as a Shakti sister because she is also a Tantrika and studies under uh, Shakti Pati Tantra Guru Yoga with our teacher Tafari Sudra Kumbhaka, although she is a master of Tantra in her own right. I am pleased to introduce to you the goddess, Miss Katrina. Greetings, sis. How are you? Greetings, Crystal. I'm fabulous. Oh my gosh, you left me with goosebumps all over with that introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and all of it's very, very true. Um, um, I was wondering, you know, first of all, just how has life been treating you? I assume you're very busy, but how's life been for you lately? Life has been orgasmic. I'm going to tell you, no, like Crystal has been truly orgasmic. And just like how orgasms can be intense sometimes, <laughs> that, that's how my life is. It can get pretty intense, but uh, through just living my practice and what I teach my, my clients, I know when to, okay, I need to take it easy. And I need to just be and cultivate that feminine divine energy because life is all about balance. Yes, yes, so true. So tell us, you know, because some people may not know where you're from, tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from, and how you started studying and practicing Tantra. Oh, I am in the beautiful sunny island of Barbados, that's in the Caribbean. It's actually the birthplace of Rihanna, the the famous pop star singer Rihanna. Yeah, I live in the same island and born in the same island as she is as well, too. And we are, it's not Jamaica, so, you know, normally <laughs> anyone hears anything in the Caribbean, it's like, what part of Jamaica is that? No, we have our own little island. <laughs> I know, so terrible. Oh, yeah. But it's it's a beautiful, beautiful place. There's lots of sunshine right now in the rainy season, uh, but all around we have pretty good weather. You know, nothing to scream about. Nothing cold is just either warm or cool or hot. Okay, we never get cold. Very nice. But but how I got into tantra, how I got into studies, my journey started, uh, well, as I said, I'm a mom mom of four, Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm always looking for ways to get fit and remain fit and whatnot. And when I was on my fourth child, I came across a group on Facebook talking about uni eggs. Mm -hmm. I was like, uni eggs? What is these? And so I did some research and... I purchased a book from uh, Saida Desale and uh, sent, uh, Emergence of the Essential Woman, and I purchased my first yoni egg from her. Mm. And I was really excited when I, you know, when I, well, I heard the women talking about the benefits of the egg, and then when I started to read her book, I got a, a more holistic uh, approach and perspective of how the egg can really help with healing. But then I was, it took me like about four to five months to read the book before I even touched my egg. And when I was finished reading the book, I then started to use the egg. And I was totally blown away, Crystal, when I saw the healing that started to take place within me. It mm. took me to another level because at that time, I was actually in an abusive relationship. And when I say abusive, it was a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual abu- abusive relationship. Mm. And I had tried many times to get away, uh, I, to leave him, ended up going back. And, but that started my journey of loving myself fiercely and unconditionally. And uh, that's where my study re- my studies really started, when I started to love myself. And I was able to leave that relationship, that abusive relationship, and never look back. Uh, so my study started as a personal journey, a personal uh, conquest. 
Oh. And I've never stopped <laughs> since then. And this was this was going on. This is nine going on ten years now. Wow! Wow! That that is amazing. And um, so you know, I was going to ask you about something else first, but since you mentioned the yoni eggs, we might as well go ahead and and speak on that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you sell yoni eggs, and um, some of our listeners may not know what yoni eggs are. Um, please explain to us, first of all, what is a yoni egg? Okay, a yoni egg, or sometimes it's called a vaginal egg or mm-hmm. goddess stone. And these are crystals, primarily made of crystal. And I would highly recommend that you get make sure that your supplier is a gemologist certified, mm-hmm. that all of the eggs are gemologist certified. And they are inserted, they're shaped like an egg. Mm-hmm. That's how they got the, the name. And... You insert it, women insert it in the vaginal canal, and you do a combination of exercises, specific exercises, which include kegels properly executed along with some other exercises, and this helps to bring about vaginal toning and agility. Agility meaning that you're able to isolate and manipulate at will the different muscular groups within the vaginal canal. And they've also been used for to help women with heavy bleeding and cramping during this cycle. I actually used to bleed 10 to 14 days a month. Mm. And now I'm down to three days. Three days, I don't even know when my, my you know, when she starts. I have no cramping, no clots. And uh, it also helps women with fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS. I've had great success with clients who suffer from these diseases uh, to significantly reduce the symptoms that they experience. And women who have found it necessary to seek medical intervention, after they've had medical intervention and they use the eggs, the the, uh, disease has not progressed to the point where they need medical intervention again. It also helps with uh, vaginal dryness, incontinence, stress incontinence. It helps with overall pelvic floor muscle strengthening. And it helps with your libido, helps get you all nice and feeling good, and increases your orgasmic potential. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what he, you you <laughs> you yeah, definitely you know sold us yoni eggs. Like, that, like if you don't want a yoni egg now, I don't know what's wrong with you. No, I'm just kidding. No. I know some. I know, I know some women get really uncomfortable about inserting anything in their vaginas. Like that's just yeah. extremely foreign to them. But um. Mm-hmm. But uh, you spoke of so many benefits, um, and does a lot of that have to do with, well, first of all, these are crystals and they have different healing properties, but also just bringing, it just brings awareness to the yoni where it may have been neglected, I guess, just because the, the yoni or the vagina is compromised of a lot of muscle and connective tissue, and a lot of times we just don't um, exercise or uh, we neglect th- those muscles and, and that p- that organ in our body. Like we just, mm-hmm. you know, we don't do anything with it. Really, is 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 that one of the reasons why the, the yoni eggs are so so powerful and and just using them? Or just briefly yeah, describe how they how that works. Yep, Crystal. Uh, when you insert the yoni egg, um, now I just want to address the, the part with the crystals. Uh, a lot of women are really engaged in the crystal and the metaphysical properties, but I just want to make it clear it's the shape, the weight, and the size mm. of the yoni egg using it and inserting it. That's what helps to bring about majority of the physical healing on an energetic level. Right. The, the crystal, mm-hmm. the metaphysical properties of the crystal of work with that right, energetically. Yes. Uh, but when you insert the egg, it brings your awareness to mm-hmm. your power source. Mm-hmm. And when you tap into your power source, so it's like women are walking about with this power source, and it's like when a country has uh, has oil just off their shores, they don't know about it. Mm-hmm. But when they tap into that oil well, or they dig into that oil well, and they get that mineral and that, that richness, that's when they actually start to feel the benefits or gain the benefits of tapping into that source. So it's just like, Women, we're many walking about with womb spaces, and I want to make it clear when I say womb spaces, even women who have had partial or, or complete hysterectomy still have that womb space. It's, it's not just the, the actual organs, but that physical space 
mm-hmm. whether you have all the organs intact or not. You still hold that power there because that's that's where each and every one of us, that's where life started with the umbilical cord being attached there. So it brings your attention to your womb space. And when you tap into that and you become more aware and you embrace it, you become, you just tap into that energy and it allows you to live from your inner source, Mm -hmm. inward, outward. And uh, by exercising, doing the exercises as well, it helps to uh, increase the the size of the veins leading to the vaginal canal and surrounding organs, so then more or, uh, oxygen, actually, more oxygen is being fed. So that means more wherever oxygen goes, cheese go, cheese goes. Mm-hmm. And then when, uh, by exchange, because you have more blood flowing, you have the exchange of, you re- removal, rather, of more carbon dioxide, which is a toxin. Mm-hmm. And so you have that free of flowing energy within the womb space and so the organs work better. So that's really the the secret, which is really not a secret, but that's how it really works. Right, right. In the yoni eggs. Yeah, you gave us a lot of information, and I want to speak more on the yoni eggs when we come back. But we got to take a break, so stay with us. I know you're learning a lot of good stuff. You don't want to miss uh, the rest of our interview with Miss Katrina. Stay with us. We just want to live, baby With our finger up against our lives We ain't here to judge, baby Cause time is short and we're just trying to get it out Let's make some moments, take a time like we own it Forget what all of them haters say, that new trend, yeah, we force it Recording every scene and drop it on the social media Let everybody see that we are the now Hello, hello, we're here now we're here now, we're here now Hello, hello, we're here now We're here now, we're here now Rolling around in my tenant, fresh lime in it Filling this shit for a minute Hate this paper, been dense since I did it Best believe I get, get, get it I represent for my whole damn city If I go down and they go down with me But if I go up, we throw cups You know that party life is a must Yeah, but ain't nothing on top of us Listening to Black LTD Radio with uh, your host Crystal Tantric Yogi, and we have the beautiful, talented, and expert Miss Katrina. I feel she, well, she has a long list of titles, but she is a sensual um, empowerment leader. She sells yoni eggs, and before we left, uh, we were talking about yoni eggs, and I think you explained so beautifully because people do get caught up in the metaphysical properties. Of um of of crystals and yoni eggs um and yoni eggs if if you missed it they are vaginal eggs that you insert that a woman can insert in her vagina 
for a healing and it, there's all kinds of healing benefits and and sensual and sexual biz benefits orgasmic uh, benefits of using this yoni eggs you you can do exercises with them and um, and and they're just they're just a, a, a beautiful uh, um, um, tool to have for women to take care of their vaginas um, and it's a holistic health uh, practice um, using the yoni eggs with different exercises, and you were explaining how it's it's the weight and the shape of the egg that has more to do with you know building awareness and 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 the and it contributing to the health and the fertility and the strength and the agility of the vagina, which conjures and cultivates up this kind of nurturing nurturing energy within the vagina and how it becomes powerful and then you know the the energetics or the metaphysics of the the yoni egg work with that but a lot of it is the physicality or the combination of triggering physicality it's like a mind body um connection that's why i'm such a big proponent of yoga and and, and using the yoni eggs is the way you described it i feel like it's like a mind body connection, like very tantric in that, you know, you're involving the body and it's not just a magical spiritual <laughs> thing that's going on. And so, um, so it's very important that, you know, whoever you purchase your yoni eggs, you know, it's good to have to purchase from someone like a Katrina who can actually explain to you what is going on when you, when you're using these, these yoni eggs. And you also said a, a gemologist, uh, you want to get those from someone who who's carrying these certified uh, eggs that did you know what they're made out of that they come from real stones what else do you think is important for women to know before they purchase their first yoni egg oh definitely uh, the, any random video or blog or anything like that that they have seen a how to do a, a kegel it most likely is incorrect <laughs> 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 yeah, so so what, I, I don't, I'm not an egg seller, I'm a sensual informant leader, so okay. when I purchase an egg, I, each person gets a free 15-minute consultation, mm -hmm. which teaches them how to do a Kegel properly, and we get, I get them started on a basis, but another thing to be very aware of is the fact that really, truly, you only need one yoni egg mm -hmm. to do work, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and there, there's a lot of information out there that you need to start with a large and then you come down to a medium and a small egg. But from my experience and training as well, any woman who starts with a large egg can actually expose herself to possibly um, having pelvic dysfunction or causing pelvic dysfunction mm. because of the, the large eggs that are so big. But remember, uh, you know, women, uh, I've heard this argument that, you know, we carry 10-pound uh, and 20-pound babies in our wombs and stuff like that. But always remember, when the baby started, it started really small and gradually right. got bigger. Right. So, the egg is an egg that I would recommend any woman as a beginner to start with. Definitely not the small, because the whole point of using the egg is to be able to manipulate it in the vaginal And what, I'm sorry, what egg did you say? What size? Small, sorry, small egg. So so what, I, you, so you think women should start with a small egg or a medium egg? No, medium, medium. Oh, okay. Medium egg, okay. yes. Yeah. yeah, because uh, starting with the small egg, as I'm saying, the whole point of using the egg is to be able to move it and manipulate it because you're looking to strengthen your pelvic floor muscles and build that agility. To move a really small egg, you'll actually have to squeeze your pelvic floor muscles and your vaginal muscles so tight, it can actually cause pelvic dysfunction. And too tight is a recipe for pelvic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. It can cause stress incontinence and it can cause your pelvis to be out of alignment. So you have to be very careful when you're using these yoni eggs and make sure that you get a, a coach who is able to take you through how to use it for maximum benefits and safety as well. Well, I, I really, I really love that, um, that you explain all of that very well and very clear. And, 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 um, 
I I started off with a large jade egg, and I hope I don't know if I had any issues <laughs> from it. Hopefully, I didn't. But um, but um, I do think one. Sometimes I do see people who sell yoni eggs, and they stress having all these different types of eggs, and that's never been my experience. At, or you know, I I didn't relate to that. I feel like. You know, um, a lot of the work that you have to do with your yoni is the physical work and it's the and it's the emotional work, um, you know, the heart connecting with the yoni and that you and, and having a lot of crystals are beautiful and they bring, you know, they all have, you know, these great properties. But a lot of the internal work I always feel like is, you know, con- you know, being aware of your consciousness and working with that and connecting with your yoni yeah. and being able to bring awareness there and then knowing what you need from there. So, yeah, so don't think you have to, I don't think women have to spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on, you know, 20, 30, 40 different yoni. It's nice to have them, you know, beautiful, but it's not necessary. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that because I've never felt that either. I do feel like I would love to have a coach like you to work with um, because I think I could get more benefits out of it. So I think that's very important too. You mentioned yoni breathing. So um, I want you just to go over a little bit more about what is yoni breathing. Okay, yoni breathing, remember earlier you mentioned that there's some women that don't want anything in their vagina except yes. probably a penis. <laughs> right, so yoni breathing <laughs> is actually a technique that is great for women who prefer not to have a yoni egg inserted or mm-hmm. don't want anything in their vagina and their vaginal canal. Mm-hmm. So yoni egg, uh, sorry, yoni breathing is a is an orgasmic technique. It and when I say orgasmic, I just mean uh, explosive. It can help to bring your energy to a peak. And uh, it's very good for, again, toning and uh, the agility of the vaginal canal because in the yoni breathing, you actually isolate and move the different muscular groups of the vaginal canal. It is very good for removing stagnant energy from the vaginal canal, allowing the energy to flow more freely. It's also very good for pelvic floor muscle strengthening and conditioning as well. And it helps to open up the hips. I have a few clients that said that the hips actually got bigger. Oh, <laughs> nice. doing the, Yeah, it didn't happen to me, but... <laughs> 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 It isn't bad too. Some people may not. So when they say their hips got bigger, do they mean the flesh on the outside of the hips, or do they mean that the uh, pelvis? Just expanded. No, no, it's not the pelvis. Like the pelvis just opened up. Ah, and their, okay. Their hips, yeah. Oh, so it's maybe a relaxed, relaxed, you know, the whole yeah, relaxed. Yeah, yeah, relaxed mm-hmm. exactly because mm-hmm. it's a very relaxing technique as well, mm-hmm. and it allows the woman to again tap into her womb space and recognizing her power. It comes from the inside and, and has really nothing to do with external uh, tools or anything like that she has the power within. So it's a, a meditative practice, which I would recommend every single woman to do on a daily basis, at least, if you can't do it daily, at least three times a day, because it helps to open up your consciousness as well as a woman for sexual liberation conscious decision making as well too because a lot of us are falling victim to our sexual and of uh, sexual urges and uh, when you make conscious decisions because during the yoni breathing technique there's a aspect of it where you align your heart and womb space so when you align your heart and womb space when your heart and womb space are aligned you can make conscious decisions for just about anything so let me just explain that a bit quickly. Like, well, let us let us you... take a break, and then when we come okay. back, we'll okay. let you explain. <laughs> so stay with us. Yeah, want to hear about Katrina telling us more about yoni breathing? This is Black LTD Radio.
You are back uh, with Black LTD Radio, and I'm Crystal Tantric Yogi, your host for Healing Through Divine Sexuality, and we have the sensual empowerment leader, the creatrix of orgasmic intelligence with us, Katrina Ifill, has joined us today, and we were talking about yoni breathing. She was explaining to us what yoni breathing is, and we were getting a little deep in the topic. We were talking about consciousness and how it relates to yoni breathing, so please Please further explain um, what you were saying before we left. Thank you so much, Crystal. I was saying that the one aspect of the yoni breathing, this version of yoni breathing that I that I teach, there is this component of aligning the heart and the womb space. And when you align your heart and your womb space, it helps to make it helps you make more conscious decisions. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was explaining that. So. Let's say you meet someone, you know, really fine looking, you're totally attracted to this person and oh, you as a woman, you know, you're oh you're she's getting all wet and excited and she's like, Oh boy, I'm ready for this <laughs> and then you and this person, y'all have this intimate moment, but your heart, you feel this heaviness in mm. your heart. And so that's you're getting a yes from your womb face, from your yoni, you're getting a no from your heart. So that means okay, that's a that's a Go slow. That mm-hmm. means don't go any further. Take it easy. Mm-hmm. Or, or alternatively, you may have, you know, feeling your heart and you, oh, you feel your heart so light and it's fluttering whenever you're around this person. And then when you have that first intimate moment, you know, she's not saying a word. You're young. Know, she's not getting wet. She's not getting engorged. You're not aroused. Mm-hmm. And that, again, is an indication to slow down. But when you get that yes from your womb space and your yes from your heart, that means you can have full permission from yourself to move forward because you are able to make a conscious decision. You're not, you're not going against that which is inher- in, innately you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it doesn't mean necessarily, Crystal, that that relationship is going to, you know, be lasting and beautiful. But what it means is that should that relationship not work, you will not have regrets. And so you won't be like, oh, I should never have given it up so quickly. And, oh, she or he did me wrong. And, you know, you, you won't you be just learn from that experience, learn from the relationship and just move on knowing, well, I made a conscious decision. It didn't work out, and I've learned, and I'm moving on. So that is, that's the aspect of aligning your heart and womb space and having that full permission. And then, as a yogi, you know, you, you can take it further, aligning the heart, the womb space, and the third eye. You mm-hmm. know, that's, you know, that will force, of course, that'd be more advanced work. Right, yeah. But, but, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But aligning the heart and womb space is very important. So that's where the conscious decision making comes in. In oh. your only breathing. Yeah, I I really really love that. And yeah, third eye would definitely be a place that hopefully all women would aspire to working towards. And that's when you get more into the tantric practice. But um, mm-hmm. but um. But yes, um, the yoni has a lot of unconscious uh, wisdom that we haven't always tapped into. And then a lot of times we misinterpret, our mind misinterprets what the yoni is sending us. You know, um, a healthy yoni can be wet and excited, you know, um, not just from, you know, sexual connection, but just, you know, from being healthy and, and, and being, you know, excited about life and, but, but being able to connect with the heart. Um, but we, and, the, and that could be tough because we have so much heart work <laughs> that we need to do. And, 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 yeah. and, and even, and even with, you know, and a lot of this is mind stuff, it's conscious stuff. So it, you know, interpreting, you know, um, you know, hormones, you know, versus, you know, what, 
you know, is appropriate for us, you know, um, you know, and what stage we are in our life and where we're at and being able to filter through that and understand that people should know that there's a lot of work, you know, uh, involved there, but that's a good first, uh, step where you can use your body, you know, mind body connection and saying, is this slowing down? Like you said, and really saying, okay, is this connecting with with what's in my heart? What is in my heart? And a lot of of people don't know what's in their heart, but at least that's a good first step. Um, especially if you've had some experiences before, because most people have had some type of experience before where they should know, you know, is this something where I should at least slow down and really make a conscious decision? That way you can say, well, at least I did like you said, you can be responsible yeah. and, and, and take more accountability, even if everything doesn't pan out the way that you thought it was. You're still learning yeah. because you stopped and you slowed down and made a conscious decision. Um, so I love yeah. that. I think that's that's beautiful. And you also are a massage uh, therapist, yeah. which I love. And so How has um, becoming a massage therapist enhanced either your understanding of Tantra or being a sensual empowerment leader? Well, it has helped me to better understand the physiology and anatomy of the human body. Mm -hmm. And uh, so along with the energetic points of the chakras, then I had now a more holistic understanding of the healing modalities and the different points within, uh, sorry, in relation to the different points of the body. So I was able to merge uh, the the tantric uh, teachings with the anatomy and the physiological, so the physical teachings of the body, and it helped me to take my work up. So I have the regular massage that I do, you know, the deep tissue, Swedish, and so on. Mm -hmm. But then I also have another service I call emotional release massage, Mm -hmm. and I also offer yoni massages Mm -hmm. as well uh, for, for specific clients, and it just also helps me with understanding the, the lingam, mm-hmm. the penis, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then and 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 guiding couples, well, guiding couples in massaging mm-hmm. the lingam and massaging the yoni internally for not only sexual pleasure but healing as well, and for for opening of awareness. Right. And it was a beautiful marriage, actually. It was a beautiful marriage. Right. Yeah. I, I always used to offer a. Uh, Massages for a long time with all of my partners. I would always massage them, just you know, something sensual to do in the bedroom. But, but when I, did, you know, after the studies, during the studies, actually, I said, "Wow, this is really a beautiful marriage." Yeah. Yes. And um, and I would I would assume so. And just and just very briefly, um, tell us what are some of the benefits of having a yoni massage? Because I'm sure some women. The eyebrows may have raised, or men may wonder what's a yoni massage, and and what, and like you know, just briefly, what are some details you can give us about the yoni massage and the benefits? Okay, well, yoni massage is is a very good technique for, and you can do it yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Although I'm aware that there's some women who don't even like their fingers. I know. We're happy. <laughs> We need to work on it now. Well, I seriously, seriously do. <laughs> but I understand because I was at that point. I didn't not I didn't like my fingers inside of me either, but I I moved past that, thankfully. But the yoni massage is good for realizing the vaginal canal, the tissues, the connective tissues, the muscles. So it's a very delicate, sensual massage where you use it either two or three fingers, whatever more comfortable and you just do little circles, small circles in a clockwise direction, going covering the full uh, circumference of the vaginal canal, and then you go a little higher, and you keep doing that until you cover the full length of the vaginal canal, and then you just gently stroke outwards. It is good for relaxing as well, so uh, obviously, if you do it yourself, it may not be as relaxing because you know you're concentrating. Your hand is probably getting tired. But if you can have someone do it for you, it also helps to uh, build the resensitivity. 
Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about, like, you know, mapping out your erogenous zones and bringing awareness to what you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can find, so, you know, uh, the books that have it, you have the A, the the U, and the G spot, you actually find probably every single letter in the alphabet (laughs) of (laughs) some erogenous spot in your vaginal canal if you take your time and you do yoni massages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll see that you're, you're a sensual woman. Right, right, great, great. So we got to take another quick break, and I hate that the show is almost over because there's so much more stuff I want to ask, but uh, we've got one more segment with Katrina, and so we'll finish up. uh, Let's ask her about female ejaculation and orgasms. So stay with us. This is Crystal Tantric Yogi, (laughs) and you're listening to Black Out TV Radio. She's like a chocolate thunder. You surprise me so sweetly. Just like a bass, baby I wish that I had time to get to know you Right now, right now It's singing, you walk and sing and talk It's in the way you strive And if I had the time Then I would surely make you my boy gentlemen you are back with uh crystal tantric yogi and miss katrina i feel she is a sensual empowerment leader and we were just talking about yoni massages um very exciting topic i've never gotten a yoni massage Uh, i've massaged my own yoni but i haven't really taken the time to just really like I don't know, spend maybe, how long would a yoni massage, would you consider a good yoni massage to be? Like 15, 20 minutes or how long? At least, at, at least, least 15 yeah. to yeah. 25 minutes. Yeah. Right, yeah. You have to have some patience. I think sometimes when it comes to self-care, we just don't have a lot of patience. And that's one thing I didn't mention about the yoni eggs, but I really, that, that's, a, as a yogi, that's one of the first thing I, first things that I realized is that if nothing else from the yoni eggs and, um, getting my first yoni egg, I realized how the lack of awareness I had when it came to my vagina, even though I had three children and I used tampons and, you know, I've been, you know, had sex, been fingered, all that stuff, and even played with myself, but still just so much lack of awareness, um, 
when it came to what actually was going on down there, what it, what my vagina looked like, and, and, and having to deal with this egg, you know, coming in and out when I'm walking or trying to work out and all this stuff. Like, I was, it's like you, I was having communication just with inserting the yoni egg and, and, you know, when I'm using the bathroom and trying to make sure it doesn't come out and all this stuff and how she responds and if she gets juicier when I have it in or not, uh, it just made me realize, like, gosh, I don't really know much at all about my vagina. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but the the yoni uh-huh. massage, I would think, is a great way to um, build aware- even more awareness and, and relaxation and, and uh and an an excitation um and then i also know that um when you're doing the yoni massage because a lot of women have concerns about um or being orgasmic and you are the orgasmic um expert (laughs) so so um intelligence i love orgasmic intelligence i love uh that that's the name of it's the name of your company right Name of my, that's the name of the brand. The, the name brand. of my company is Waves of Bliss. Yeah. Oh, Waves orgasmic of Bliss. Orgasmic Intelligence, yes. Oh, okay, yes. okay. Yes. But I love Orgasmic Intelligence, uh, the name of the brand. and Because it's important to have intelligence with your orgasms. And a lot of women have concerns. Uh, one big concern is um, just being orgasmic at all. Some women have trouble being orgasmic at all. And some women have trouble um, having certain types of orgasms. I've heard some women say they can only have clitoral, and they have issues with having vaginal orgasms. Sometimes I wonder, too, if women understand what a vaginal orgasm feels like versus a clitoral. So what advice would you give to a woman who, first of all, is wondering, can she have an orgasm at all, um, and then having you know different types of orgasms? Okay, well, first, uh, let me just quickly define orgasmic intelligence because everyone is hearing orgasmic. Orgasmic intelligence is simply using your six senses Mm -hmm. and your sexual energy to heal and empower yourself using that in it energy from within Ah. to heal and empower yourself. So it's a matter of slowing down and opening up and experiencing through your senses. And that brings me now to... The word that I coined, I coined the word orgasm as opposed to orgasm mm-hmm. because what I found is when uh, when I worked with women and understanding, or not only women, but, but men as well, to understanding that you can have that same euphoric feeling through experiencing through your, your senses, it mm-hmm. helps women especially to relax more. And it took the focus from the genital orgasm. Mm. And so when they relax and they realize they can have that same euphoric feeling through their eyes, their nose, taste, touch, smell, then they found that their their geni- orgasms in the genitalia actually started to become more powerful because they were so uptight, so so stressed out. I'm not having orgasms, I'm not having orgasms. And then mm. some of them even realized that they were having orgasms because they're different types, they're different intensities. Mm. So they were watching these blue movies and listening mm. to their girlfriends say, Oh girl, I had I had four, five, I came six, seven, eight, nine, ten times <laughs> Put in the work to heal. They want 
everything quick, right. quick. And and I think that's that's the demise of us as a people, because although we're in a time of the quickening, there's still some things that you need to slow down and take time to get the full healing effects of it. Right, right. And that's so beautiful. I love the way you explain that because that's so true. Um, when I started practicing Tantra, I realized that what I didn't know before is that I could have a heart orgasm and and um, and I didn't realize. And some of them, you know, were through, you know, dreams, but I could feel them, you know, like I, the mm-hmm. the orgasm that I felt in my heart was very different than the one I felt um, in in my yoni or um, from my clitoris, it was like this just burning sensation that just felt like my heart was bursting open. But I knew, you know, I knew internally like that was an orgasm. And I forgot, you know, if I was, you know, I was, I was probably lucid dreaming. Um, but I felt what that was. And I was, and, and then, you know, when you have, you know, a third eye orgasm and, and your your third eye opens up and, and the feeling of euphoria that you get, you know, in your the crown of your head, like all of those um, feel different. And then with your, you know, your genitalia, you, you, like you said, there's different ways. And I love how you explained it as a journey, you know, and what I love about it being a journey is that, you know, there's there's a spectrum of the orgasms that you can feel even with your genitalia, you know, um, and depending on the connection, if it's really heartfelt or if it's really intense or if it's, you know, soft and sensual moments that you're having. I think sometimes people forget that the mind really is or your brain really is the most um, influential sexual organ that you have and and your awareness within yourself um, can determine what that feels like and that could be different for every person depending on where you are in your life and and um and as you get older or when you're younger it could be very different and and not better or worse but just you know different just a spectrum of exploration as you were saying and um and so Let's take a break, and uh, we have one more segment with Katrina. I forgot, so we've got yeah. one more segment. <laughs> and uh, in the last segment, I have to ask her about squirting, female ejaculation, because that's a hot topic, and she's an expert, so we need to hear the experts speak on this, because some people don't know what they're talking about. So, <laughs> so if you want to hear about squirting with an expert, stay with us. You don't want to miss this. This is Crystal Tantric Yogi, and you're Listening to Black LTV Radio. Oh, California yeah. dreaming. California dreaming, baby. From the 101 to 405. Where the lockers, poppers, and boogaloo survive. From the cold California streets of the LBC. To Venice's cool breeze, all the way down the Inglewood, where it's all to the good. From the southern to northern parts of California, yeah. they say it's a state that's golden. And in order to groove here, you've got to be chosen. Where you see beautiful mules from the Craylon can. Trees and old school Chevys From the L.A. skyline To the PCA's coastline California, the California dream. dream, you did It's the land of milk and honey Even when it rains, it's always sunny California It's your main dream. man, Fly Guy And I'm buzzing through the whole of L.A., baby And we keeps it to moving And gets it to growing Everything is live in LA and that's no job. Like I said, we California dream, baby. And it's your man, Fly Guy. And they say, from the Bay Area and back down, California Cali is where they put their back down. You 
are listening to Black LTD Radio with Crystal Tantric Yogi, and we are speaking with the beautiful Katrina. I feel she's from Barbados. That's why you hear that Caribbean accent, so beautiful and sensual. And um, I want to, while we have a little bit more time before we uh, let you know where you can find Katrina, I want to talk about the hot topic of squirting or female ejaculation. Um, some people think that it's peeing, and we need to dispel that myth from the expert. Please let our audience know what is happening or what is female ejaculation and what is happening when a female is squirting. It is not pee. It is not pee. <laughs> it is not pee. <laughs> However, I may tell you, though, <laughs> some with some women, especially at the beginning stages, mm-hmm. It may have little traces of urine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it may have traces of urea, mm-hmm. but it is not 100% pee because the bladder and the, the glands from which the, the uh, we call it amarita and tantra, mm-hmm. which is the liquid, the, the actual ejaculation, the fluid that comes out, they're so close together, the, the bladder can, you know, can seep some urine, but it is not pee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's the first thing. And I believe that any woman can ejaculate. Any woman. Any woman can squirt, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I want to just differentiate. In in uh, in our system, ejaculation is the uh, creamy white uh, fluid that comes from the actual secretion of the opening of the vaginal canal. We call that soma. Mm-hmm. And uh, squirting is the actual uh, very light see-through liquid Mm -hmm. so there's actually a differentiation between the two but i believe any woman can squirt Mm -hmm. once she allows herself to to do it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and she most times she's the one who's blocking herself from doing it right right. so what happens what happens okay so for you sisters who are like oh i I gotta squirt i gotta squirt (laughs) you are actually stopping yourself because most times you get an urge as though you want to, to pee, right? You feel as though you want to pee. Mm-hmm. And so then you have that fear, oh, don't, I don't want to pee the bed. Then you hold it back. Mm-hmm. But I want you to test yourself. If you hold it back after you've had finished, you know, whether you're, you're solo cultivating or actually having sexual intercourse, go and see if you actually, afterwards, go and sit on the toilet and you will see that you actually don't want to if you wanted to pee and you stop it and you go on the toilet, it will flow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how you know for sure that you want it to squirt. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just put some sheets, some double, you know, double it with the sheets, get some uh, waterproof plastic, something. Just spread it out on the bed and just relax and let it flow. And the more you allow it to flow, the better you will get at it. It's, it's easy just once you allow yourself to yeah, yeah. And does the strength of the pelvic floor have a lot to do with a woman's ability as well, like how strong the the yoni is? Or No, actually, you know, I remember once uh, I did a workshop with, with someone who would be considered one of the vanguards in the industry, and uh, during the workshop, she was speaking about the, the uppermost muscles closest to the cervix in the vaginal canal, how easy it is for her to to squeeze those muscles because she's a squirter. Mm. I was like, that has nothing to do with squirting, actually. It really has, it. no, no, it has nothing to do with squirting. It's just a matter of relaxing to the point where, you, and, and we refer to it as the third gate, the mm-hmm. waters, mm-hmm. allowing those gates to open so it causes full relaxation and just allowing it to flow. And that makes so sense because if you can if you can pee, you should be able to squirt, right? <laughs> Exactly. Exactly right, Crystal. Yeah, yeah. Makes plenty sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then just one last question about the squirting really quickly, and then I want you to uh, tell us where we can find you. Um, What's the spiritual or psychological uh, significance of a woman squirting uh, in a tantric practice, if there is any, or tantric ritual? That allows her to, at one, open up the third gate waters, which are the the most spiritual or purest waters that she has buried within. It 
also allows her to become more sexually liberated, mm-hmm. uh, not to the point where she, uh, um, when really and truly it's, it's really a personal choice, mm-hmm. how she chooses to use that sexual liberation. Mm-hmm. But it is a matter of understanding your sexuality mm-hmm. and your abilities as the feminine divine to bring forward those divine waters so it's psychologically, it's like, oh, my gosh, I can do this. Right, right. <laughs> uh, realization. Uh, but spiritually, it opens her up to to another level of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, and then she can say, oh, I'm a squirter. <laughs> <laughs> because I just want to make it clear, uh, Crystal, I haven't always been a squirter. Mm-hmm. I was not a squirter. I, you know, I, I squirted and I was like, oh, what's that? What's that? You mm-hmm. know, how did that happen? It's only when I started to practice Tantra and being led through uh, rituals through our, our, our Tantric masters, uh, Tafare, that I was able to open up my third foot gate water. So I, I'm telling you, through Tantra, I became a squirter. So you can, be, you are able to squirt once you allow yourself to. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's important for women to know too, because I didn't. I didn't even know women squirted at all, or I never heard of female ejaculation. Never heard that women had a prostate gland. None of, not any of that, um, until I started my tantric practice. So yes, I believe that all women um, can squirt as well, and you don't have to start off as one. I didn't either, Um, and I could talk on this topic for a very long time, but I want to give you the, um, I want to use this time um, so so you can let people communicate and let people know where they can find you, give us all your social media, let us know any events that you have coming up, and uh, anything else that you would like to leave people with. Okay, well, orgasmic with a K, intelligence. You just look for that orgasmic intelligence on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. We're in all three of those platforms, or you can go directly to our website at www.orgasmic with a K intelligence dot com. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much. If you want to contact uh, with me directly, I'm also on Facebook, Katrina Eiffel. Definitely, if you want to get information about our services and our products, go onto the website or our social media sites. Uh, we just actually launched our Yoni Breathing Instructors course. And that's a six-week course, and uh, we're into the second class. So actually, if you're interested in joining, it's not too late. You can definitely hop on the course now. And I have an upcoming Yoni, Instru- Yoni Egg Instructor course. That's coming up, and that's going to be launching in about another three months or so. So um, I do online coaching as well. So, you know, I don't have to be there physically. We can do it online. So I am here available at your service to serve and help empower you sensually. Yes, and you want to follow this lady because she is worth following. Just just a a mountain um, and treasures of information come from her. She's well studied. Um, she's a practitioner. Um, she's not just you know giving you information that she's learned from other people. She is a you know she practices herself and it's authentic and I'm sure that you could probably tell from the interview. So thank you so much Katrina for coming on. We'd love to have you back on um and and uh and learn more from you and uh I want to thank uh everyone for listening this evening. Please listen every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear healing through divine sexuality and have a good night.